You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for August 14th, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where Go Postal Unions has been the watchword for this podcast since the very beginning. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Drift class. Happy anniversary, Blue Gal. Oh, oh. you. Oh. oh, he remembered. Yeah, <laughs> he did. He remembered. Yeah. Uh, nine years. We will have been married next Wednesday. That's true. That's so nice. That's so nice. I, I thank haven't, you. I haven't we scrolled have so all over many to... calendars, and so you know, <laughs> we have so much to be grateful for. We do and, um, we very much do. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't because of our anniversary, but we did dance in the kitchen this week. We did. Just yes. a little bit. Just uh, a little bit. There, well, there was some news. You know, was, uh, I'm not sure everyone knows this. It's uh, been kept a pretty tight secret by the Biden administration, but they leaked it uh, early to us. And uh, <laughs> No, they didn't. No, they didn't. We have a vice presidential candidate. We have a vice presidential candidate that we like. We like her. We're happy that she's yeah. a candidate. I called it. I mean, I think I, I'm allowed to crow a little bit. Yeah. I, I said that it was going to be her. Yes. Moments before and it was announced, you, you no, said No, I said it. I said it weeks before it was you announced. Did. You did. And it's, it's it's a very logical and sort of, no matter how you approach it, it, it makes the most sense of pretty much everyone, which is not to take but anything I think, away from anybody. I think we were so beaten down by bad news yeah. that the fact that he would choose anyone else was always a possibility and we were prepared to be disappointed. What's the worst possible news? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, he's yeah. abandoning the the Barack Obama coalition again. Wait a minute. He's, he's John Steny, Kasich, Steny Hoyer, yeah. John Kasich, and Steny Hoyer. Oh, Joe Lieberman is like <laughs> just Joe Lieberman's like out there going. You know, I could still do it, man. I could, Chris Dodd is, you know, Lieberman's still good. <laughs> Lieberman's still got a got a it's a fastball left in him. He can do this, and. Every one of us is like, please don't, just don't fuck this up. Now, <laughs> according to the um, dirtbag left and Fox News, of course, this was a fuck up because uh, yeah, right. Uh, uh, Kamala Harris is a, a secret underground Antifa cell leader and an overzealous prosecutor. At the same time. At the same time, yeah. which is yeah. hilarious that the horseshoe theory of politics that eventually – Glenn Greenwald and uh, Tucker Carlson will shake hands behind. Oh, they are actually oh, on the same show. <laughs> it's literally, <laughs> physically, it's manifestly true that this is that these these t- two um, extremely dangerous, dumb, uh, destructive forces have decided that uh, Donald Trump is their future. Well, and and it's amazing to me that this is all they've got. Well, yeah, and it is the same. They are replaying the Barack Obama playbook. Well, because she's black. Which worked out <laughs> so well for them in two elections. Right, because she's black. and, and she's, so Well, she's black. That's all they've got is he's got to be both a weak and ineffectual leader. Right. And history's you know, greatest the, villain. the person yes. who's history's greatest villain is going to come take away your guns by sure. force. Sure. And right? I... I now that they have no guns, because eight years of Obama means they have no guns They have left. no guns, right? I'm thinking, I like our odds at this point, because they're completely disarmed, and most of them have been rendered gay by Barack Obama's secret maker, Kid Gay Ray. So, oh, gosh. You know, which means they're on our side, more or less, unless they're log cabin Republicans, in which case they don't mm-hmm. really know what they want. Um, but it's it seems pretty straightforward. I mean, now they have one, they have a, basically a four-page playbook, and one of those pages is in case of black person. And right. so- and, and it, Break it, steel, and yeah. yeah. But it's all the same. It's a woman, and she's. It, it, this is literally minutes after the announcement was made that campaign, Trump's campaign, and the RNC all came after Harris as the nastiest, meanest, most horrible, most liberally liberal, leftist, liberal, commie nominee ever. And we're all just sitting back going, really? This I can what, live with all of that. This is what you got? <laughs> you deserve all the nastiness that she has waiting for you now, at the at the ballot box. <laughs> this is not. This is not intended for 
consumption outside of the um, the uh, bell jar, the, what I have referred to many, many years ago as the um, bell jar containing Rush Limbaugh's beer farts, where they all right. live and they all just breathe in this psychotic poison for decade after decade. And so the brain is all rotten and their and their hearts are all little lumps of coal. And this this is for them. This gets them charged up. And you could see it if you just went to local social media. Um, once again, I highly recommend if you are a coastal podcast, either conservative or liberal, and, mm-hmm. the, and, the, and the behavior of Republican voters is somehow a shock or a mystery to you. Yeah. Um, please contact look at, us look immediately. At South Central Illinois Facebook. Yes. Come to. <laughs> we will. We will walk you through. We will be your Selena Zico, to be your ambassador. Yeah. We will tell you what they're thinking because they live right next door to us, and, and they're perfectly willing to blab it all yeah. over the pages of the of our local newspaper as yeah. well. Yeah. So the minute it comes out of the RNC, nasty, nasty. By the way, she's not really an African American, and she's a cop, and she's bad. That whole, you know train of turds showed up on local social media yeah. you know this it literally comes out of their mouth and shows up on on locally this is how they function they function as a single psychotic racist organism and the, and if you break from them and look at it from the outside you're you're shocked that you know you never noticed this before which again is why people who are surprised the republican party is full of republicans at this point in our history, shouldn't be really near a microphone. They -hmm. should be off in the woods somewhere, contemplating their souls, figuring out how the fuck did I get this so wrong when this was my one job, and leave the accurate analysis of what the Republican Party is, what they really think, not what they talk about when they're on the McNeil Lehrer Report back in the day, or when they're on the PBS NewsHour these days, or when they're on Meet the Press, but what the real Republican Party is actually like. Leave that to us. Because so far, our, we're batting like a thousand. So, mm-hmm. you know, which I know counts against you when you're a liberal. But it was delightful to see uh, Joe Biden make the completely logical choice of Senator Harris. And it was completely predictable that the Republican Party would react exactly the way it did. So here we are. And well, uh, and we had we had someone uh a listener write us, and I really appreciated the feedback, mm-hmm. how how important it is not to venture over into dehumanizing the enemy. Right. And I agree with that. Uh, mm-hmm. And at the same time, I sent him a copy of a letter to the editor that was published August 8th mm-hmm. of this year. Yes. Uh, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'll read this little bit of it. Mm-hmm. If Joe Biden does win the election, I think he will be just a puppet. Somebody else will be pulling the strings. <laughs> <laughs> then when the Democrats decide they have achieved the maximum benefit from having him at the top of the ticket, they will dump him. Mm-hmm. And whoever the vice president is, Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren or whoever, whoever. will take over. Shortly thereafter, we will be headed down the road to socialism. You won't like it. The only ones who will like it are the ones who will be bringing it to you, the Democrat Party. Well, see, now, all of this is pure Rush Limbaugh, Janine Pirro. It's all Th- true. That's um, it's all true. But it's yeah. all true. Yeah. <laughs> We're headed down the road to socialism. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we might fully you fund wish. Social Security and Medicare. <laughs> wow. And, you know, uh-huh. you know what she is a recipient of. You know, sure. this is the thing. Right. Sure. These are some uh, retired state worker who's living on her pension and Medicare and, state pension and Social Security. And, yep, yeah. Yep. That, that's his. But that it, it is I, I will I will not in my heart of hearts stop thinking of Republican voters who remain Republican voters in this day and age as reprogrammable meat bags, because that's mm-hmm. what they are. That's they have made themselves into that. This is an accomplishment for them. They yeah. did this to themselves. Um, but I will say. Just trying to think of this as a writer, as a character in a story. You're trying to sort of get into their head and figure out what motivates them. And it is it is difficult but not impossible for me to, to imagine the enormous amount of effort it takes to keep yourself this stupid all the time. Well, and I'm sure that she carefully edited this uh, 
letter mm-hmm. and removed the re- the references to AOC and Soros because she didn't want to appear extreme. I don't want to appear extreme. It's all true, but I don't want to. <laughs> uh, that, then they might not publish my letter, and then I would right. change the they world. They might not publish my letter if I if I say Soros, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it is it is a simple fact that. If a third of this country, a third of the active voters in this country still think Donald Trump is doing a great job and that mm-hmm. his floor really hasn't changed that much, his ceiling has, but his floor really hasn't changed that much. And these are the same people who believe that Barack Obama was a king. And they're the same people who supported George Bush for eight years and on and on and on. And so the, birtherism is back, baby. There is nothing about them that I would consider um, civilized or mm-hmm. decent. They are something else and it, it they have they have worked every fucking day for decades to keep themselves this angry and this stupid and this hateful um because there's nothing else for them there's no other identity for them out there they cannot imagine because you pull the pin on this grenade and everything falls apart because well you, and i want anyone who wants to debate politics <clears throat> with me to bring yeah. a copy of the 2020 Republican National Convention platform wherever to it the is. table it's there isn't one <laughs> there isn't one well there's a there's a copy and paste of the last one which includes let us not forget <laughs> getting rid of the current <laughs> occupant of the white house right right that's just basic um and that's the thing. If 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 you start to unravel, and this is the this is a protective mechanism under all the lies somewhere. There's mm-hmm. some little there's some little protective reptilian protective mechanism that says if we start acknowledging that any one of these people might be even a little bit right, we have to start acknowledging that everyone we trust is a liar, everything we believe is bullshit, and everything liberals have said about this us for years is true. And there's no way these people can live with that fact. There's just not. There's no, there's no place for them to go, which is why everyone who predicts a, a Republican renaissance or turning the corner or we're going to have this moment of awakening, no matter how. New tone. Don't forget Donald Trump's new tone. Right. Um, all of that's bullshit because yeah. there is – this is um, – just to skip ahead a little bit. This was the week when Charlie Sykes, who I monitor as one monitors enemy broadcasts from a foreign country. Um, on the on the uh, on the bulwark, tiptoed right up to the line, and suggested that just maybe Republicans have a quote voter problem. <laughs> <laughs> now, give them credit for that. So, yeah. so let's do the math, shall we? Um, I'm, I'm imagine I'm at a whiteboard here. Now, here is the Republican Party. Now, let's subtract from the Republican Party, the leader of that party, who's clearly a a white nationalist, racist asshole. And let's subtract from that all the elected officials and representatives who are quislings or lunatics who support Donald Trump and who clearly are either um, traitors or or cowards. But you don't want them anywhere in your public service. And let's subtract from them all the Republican voters. What do you have left exactly? There is no Charlie Sykes. Yeah, Charlie Sykes going, God, and I never knew. in the studio with him at the bulwark. Yeah, Charlie Sykes, <laughs> who spent 30 years in right-wing talk radio saying, you know, maybe the Republican voter is really the problem. You, you, really? You think the people who put a roof over your head, Charlie, who yeah. bought you a summer home, who who were telling you through your earpiece that they really were this bad for years, but the, the money was good and nobody was getting hurt but liberals, right? Nobody's getting the shit kicked out of them, but those the, the lefties. So it was all okay. And now that it turned out that, oh my God, it's the party leadership, the head of the party and the voters. There's nobody left in the Republican party to be a Republican in Charlie Sykes' imagining other than a handful of never Trumpers on a lifeboat who all swear they had no fucking idea any of this was happening. Mm-hmm. And that's the mm-hmm. unforgivable part. I can, I can, I can board Stuart Stevens onto my lifeboat because Stuart Stevens says, yeah, it was all a lie. It was all bullshit. I should have known better. I didn't. I, it was staring me in the face. I made money doing it. I was good at it. And, uh, you know, like, like, um, Walter White says at the very end of, uh, of breaking bad when he's, his wife thinks he's making one more excuse for his criminal yeah. fucking behavior. Right. And, and if you say one more time, you did this for the family, I will fucking scream. He says, no. And he said, no, I did, I did it for me I and I was me. good at it. <laughs> good at it. It, made me, it made me feel alive. Yep. That's why yep. everyone on the Never Trumpers was a member of the monster machine 
for all those years because they liked it because they were good at it and made them feel good. Kicking the shit out of people like me made them feel great. And, and they got paid for it. So mm -hmm. the idea that now, long after it's too late to undo the damage they did, they're all going to sit around going, but we didn't know. We did. Well, yeah. who did know that? Who knew? Well, we knew. We live out here in the middle of the real world. We're the ones who knew. So why not listen to us when we tell you what's coming next and what your party is about to indulge in, uh, starting with the destruction of the post office? Well, and or I would say ending with the destruction of the post office because those folks that you're talking about mm -hmm. worked very hard and successfully to elect people who defunded every infrastructure week that we've ever pretended to have. That's true. Absolutely. True. And so, and defunded welfare reform and defunded all of the programs that might have helped people. And they did it for tax cuts for billionaires. Mm -hmm. And we, we, the reason that they are still Chardonnay sipping Republicans who want to create a Lincoln voter. Yes. Are you a Lincoln voter? To keep their tax cuts. It's yeah. to keep their tax cuts. It's to make sure that their Wall Street investments don't get taxed. Mm hmm. And so that they can have their third and fourth home and not pay taxes on it. And it's really that simple. <laughs> um, talk, speaking of the post office, that's another thing that, you know, this particular podcast can crow a little bit about. Yes, we can. We have said go postal unions for years. Almost since the beginning. Uh, almost since the first Almost podcast. since the beginning, we have said, you know, the post office is democracy. Yes, it is civilization. Post is an essential mm -hmm. quality of our civilization. It is. And we understood, and many other liberals understood too, that the post office was being denigrated by the right wing who wanted to privatize it and trash it mm -hmm. and set separate rules to defund it by caveat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we didn't like that, and we still don't like it. Well, back so in, now that it's out in the open as an effort to keep the fascist in office, mm -hmm. uh, there are many people sounding an alarm. Well, back in the olden days, uh, you you probably remember this, Blue Gal. I, I struck up a telephone friendship with the late Harlan Ellison. Yes, you did. <clears throat> I was his Chicago guy, and he'd call about once a week. And, he did. And, and pick my brains and tell me what I was wrong about. And he was a very generous uh, critic of my work. I sent him a story at his request. He dressed it up a little bit, sent it along to an editor who rejected it with a very nice letter. And it was a lovely um, late in his life and middle of my life gift to to me that yeah. I could I could talk to and this. He was author. a hoot. Let's face it, he, he was, was a hoot. He was a hoot and a smart man and and, and a, a son of a bitch a lot of the time. And um, didn't he publish his home phone number on a he did. on a chat room <laughs> and, he, and, he, and, he, and i was the one who jumped his I, I talked to his wife who just passed away i believe last week oh. um uh susan uh, I, yeah. I i i blew and said are you sure you want to do this and i got a thank you note from her and it was, it was <laughs> she said harlan yeah. what harlan, did you do <laughs> harlan does not understand the internets and never did um <laughs> But one of the things he told me repeatedly when we during our conversation, he was looking for the source material because I just imagine his house is like the library at Alexandria. He's going through the scrolls oh, sure. looking for the original no, material. Piles and piles of paper. He said, um, yeah. he said, I'm telling you, th this book I read, I can't remember the author. It was years and years ago. But the next thing they're going to come after is the post office because the post office is this, and I'm not quoting him now, but in spirit I am, is this egalitarian miracle. Mm -hmm. it, it knits mm -hmm. the country together. It's knit the country together since before it was a fucking country. It is It is a, a, an amazing thing. You, for pennies, you can send a letter from one end of the continent to the other and guarantee delivery. And it's it's a thing. It's just a thing that is part, is the, is, is, is the woof and warp of this country. And Republicans fucking hate it because it's, it's a public service. It works really well. It doesn't cost a lot and everyone benefits from it. And it, it, it really insults everything they have to say about government being bad and bloated and wrong and stupid and everything should be privatized and the, and the, mar and the marketplace should decide. So they're going to come for the post office. Mark my words, they're coming for the post office next. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they are. And, they're, and, and they've been coming in slow motion for a long time. Mm -hmm. But now it's we have to dynamite the road to the polling place to mm -hmm. stop people. from. That is what they're doing. They're destroying the route to the polling place for Americans to vote. And they're doing it for a, right out in the open. Donald Trump is saying, "Yeah, I'm getting, I'm, I'm screwing the post office over because 
if uh, that that's what let Democrats have universal vote by mail. We don't want that. And all the local fucking mouth breathing Republican business owning morons are like, yep, yep, vote by mail is evil, evil, evil. It's always a corrupt, corrupt. And again, taken as an organism, you cannot reason with any of these people, which is why. Well, and and Donnie and Melania requested their mail in ballots this morning. Yeah, yeah, and and. It, there's no – whatever part of the brain is that recognizes conflicting information uh, is just yeah. burned out in the Republican skull. There's just nothing there. If Donnie and Marie do it, <laughs> it's okay. Mm -hmm. And if, if uh, Democrats do it, it's wrong. And vice right. versa when the parties switch. And they just are incapable of recognizing – there's no object permanence left in the Republican brain, which is why uh, we take from – for our scripture today – Yes. Speaking of people who are right, and this is, yeah. I, I said to you as we were preparing for this show, mm -hmm. yes, I can crow about the post office and go postal unions, and I can crow a little bit about Kamala Harris, uh -huh. but uh, the person that is most <laughs> right all of the time yes. is the late, great Steve Gilliard. Yes. So uh, on the subject of, of presidential debates and generally arguing with these mouth-breathing reprogrammable meat bags. This is Stephen Gilliard from 15 years ago. Uh, um, and I don't know what his voice sounds like, weirdly enough. So just accept the fact that I'm doing an audiobook of Steve's work right now. <laughs> There's a tendency for liberals to try and be fair, to consider other points of view. So we get baited by conservatives in debates on terms that they set. I'm going to act on the following. I don't care what conservatives think. The National Review Online Corner thinks I'm a racist. I don't care. Their opinions on race are meaningless. Instacracker doesn't like what I say. That's the purpose of the exercise. I want conservatives to read this site and come away steaming. I don't want them to think they will like a word I will say here. I don't want them to think I will consider their opinions or viewpoints. I want them to think, boy, he doesn't like conservatives and really, really doesn't care what we say. I'm tired of people acting like these people can be reasoned with or talk to. They don't want to talk. They want to drive us in, away into a corner and ridicule our ideas. I'm not writing to make conservatives happy. I want them to hate my opinions. I'm not interested in debating them. I want to stop them. Right. End of quote. And I had a, a back and forth with someone on Twitter today who was upset with Mika Brzezinski for uh, leading her monologue today with Trump is a disgrace and a liar and a bad person, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, if you really want to debate conservative, you don't want to start off talking about how they're a liar. And it's like, did you just wake up this morning mm -hmm. and you don't know anything about Mika Brzezinski's grooming of Donald Trump to be president of the United States, Literal. first of all? Literal Literally. grooming. Literally smoothing his hair so we look better on camera. Yep. 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 Uh, and explaining to him what was coming up next in their questioning. I mean, just just absolutely, mm -hmm. it's a show mm -hmm. until he won and then was nasty to her mm -hmm. um, and her husband. Mm -hmm. But uh, he wanted me, blue gal, to be more like Martin Luther King. <laughs> yeah. 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 And what is happening in the Republican Party right now makes me feel like I'm supposed to be civil in my debate with James Earl Ray. Yeah. Who shot Martin Luther King yeah. because that's the Republican Party I see on social media. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, this infests, I mean, our, our local paper, um, to take one example, when I was, uh, I, I, I used to sit and chat with the editorial board. Um, yes, you did. For a year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I would ask difficult our questions. Citizens, citizens Input Commission right. or whatever. That's right. Yeah. And I would ask difficult questions like, why do you, uh, why do you reprint Ann Coulter? <laughs> Why do you have Ann Coulter in your Why paper? Why is Ann Coulter yeah. in this paper? And I'd get this sort of like hemming and hawing because the, the person I asked knew better. She well, they fucking, looked at their laps and went, uh. uh well, know. it's balance and fairness. You know, it's fairness and balance. We have we have to make Joyce, who wrote the Biden letter, right. happy. Well, yeah. and, that, and that's the thing. In, in the space of a, a, a very short period of time, um, the same paper that, that – um, reprinted Ann Coulter and Mark mm -hmm. Thiessen and a bunch of other people who should never be allowed anywhere near a public opinion platform, um, and then lectured us on the importance of balance, wrote a, 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 an editor's op-ed column, a publisher's op-ed column on the importance of civility. 
right. and how we should all be more civil with each other. And I'm like, okay, so you reprint Ann Coulter, and then you lecture us on how to be civil because you don't like liberals punching back. That's what you're saying. You don't like mm-hmm. when liberals call you yep. out on the horrible shit you do. That's when the tone police come in and tell you to stop doing that. Shortly thereafter, they sponsored an outdoor um, an outdoor product event, and their keynote speaker and their, their was noted outdoorsman Ted Nugent. And he's who, just an outdoorsman, just by an the outdoorsman. way. And yeah. the, the five liberals I know are like, you mean Ted Nugent who called for killing Barack Obama and, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. Hillary Clinton can suck on my AK. That, that Ted Nugent, that's the guy that you are proudly promoting as one of America's foremost outdoorsmen. The same paper that just lectured me on civility that, oh, I get it. You're a Republican asshole. That's what, oh, I get it. You don't want to debate. You want you want your, your taxes to stay low yeah. at the expense of everything. You want yep. your shitty opinion to be the default setting. And when someone comes along and points out that you are a Republican hack who is using a newspaper to shit all over the values you say you value, that's when you get all very tone police. You go, wait a minute, let's all be civil here. Fuck civility. I'm yeah. not. I'm done being. I, I was done being civil with these people in 1994. So I'm not, there's no coming back from you. If the Republican party gets the drubbing that their internal polling says they're going to get, you watch in January, it's going to be, well, we need civility, we need centrism, and we need 50% of the decision-making. You really have to share the platform with us because this is America and we all have to share. No, no, we don't. So, so you jump. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Joe Biden proved with his selection of Kamala Harris, mm-hmm. that he is willing to make Democrats alone happy Yes, with his decision-making process. And Republicans can go fuck themselves. And well, that really, that's what happened this week. Yes. That is the signal that he sent. And and you have jumped ahead to Mr. David Brooks of the New York Times. No. Well, can, before we get to that, <laughs> you have something in our notes about the post office, and I don't want to lose this thread. Yeah. Um, you have, there are so many ways to fix this, that today the Postal Service warned 46 states their voters could be disenfranchised by delayed mail-in ballots. And I agree with those people who say states attorney general, attorneys general need to sue over this. Oh, yeah. Within state government. Forget the Department of Justice. Bill Barr is not going to help you. No. This has to be a statewide we will we will fix this. And you have there are so many ways to fix this. Calling Tom Steyer and Jeff Bezos and Mike Bloomberg and J.B. Pritzker and Howard Schultz. Yeah, there are lots and, of liberal billionaires who, if it's a matter of three point five billion dollars, um, mm-hmm. you know, I talked about this, you know, among ourselves earlier this week. The, J.P. Mm-hmm. Morgan bailed out the banking system in nineteen oh seven. J.P. Morgan was an asshole. He was an absolute cast iron. Um, um, uh, running dog, slave labor, capitalist asshole. scum. Right. But he did, in fact, stop or at least slow down the the 1907 panic and got a bunch of other rich people to step in and stop the banks from I think collapsing. It was 1873, but whatever, whichever panic it was, it yes, was a he's panic. the one that bought mm-hmm. gold bonds, yeah, and and fixed it so that. Uh, the presidency, the whole country's financial situation wouldn't go down the toilet. So, so, the, so these guys can buy four billion dollars in stamps. Okay, you know? but, but Dirk, I have an, another interesting idea. You mentioned five white guys. Yeah, uh, there is now a group called More Than a Vote. It is a voting rights organization launched by LeBron James. I've heard of this. And uh, yes, other black athletes like Patrick Mahomes and Mm -hmm. Sloane Stevens are involved and they have established a, as Axios calls it, a bipartisan arena, (laughs) arena voting advisory group. Uh The goal is to connect sports teams with local elections officials and convert arenas into voting sites. Into mega sites, right. Right. Leveraging their size, good for social distancing Mm -hmm. and location, easy to access, find on a map, providing free parking and making it easy to get to the ballot box. This is great. The Atlanta Hawks, the Detroit Pistons, Milwaukee Bucks, Sacramento Kings and Charlotte Hornets are among the NBA teams that have already established such partnerships. Mm -hmm. And in a memo obtained by Axios, NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell, who is, again, not my friend. No, no. (laughs) uh, Encourage teams to consider allowing their stadiums or indoor practice facilities to be used as election centers on election day. Mm -hmm. 
so that is another set of multimillionaires. Yes. Who can make a difference and um, make it easier for people to vote. I believe Lyft and Uber have announced they're going to mm -hmm. offer free rides on election to day to the polls. Um, I know in, in parts of Colorado, they have drive up voting where you can drive up to a window and drop off your ballot because you've done mm -hmm. you've, you've gotten your mail in ballot, but you want to make sure it's counted and you want to make sure it's counted that day. You don't want right. these people to be able to say on election night, well, Donald Trump is ahead, so he's probably going to win. So let's just stop counting right now. Stop counting. Right. And get <clears throat> but, your Brooks Brothers riot started to yeah. stop the count. Right. In, in right. 12 states so that you can just right. say, well, it was close, but, you know, Democrats rigged it. There are there are drive up polling places where you can do your mail in ballot. You can have it in your envelope, but you drive up and hand it to a person who checks to make sure your registration is cool. And then off you go. And they count it that day, just like a regular ballot. There, the point being, there are lots of ways to fix this problem. But they have to be done. People have to do them. You have to have PPE equipment if you're going to have election judges. You're going to have to have space. You're going to have to have money. There are people out there who can provide all of these things. And a whole bunch of them were just running for president. Right. And they were running right. for president as, as because they were afraid of the future for the future of their country. And they swore they'd use their deep pockets to get rid of Donald Trump. Well, you know the best way to get rid of Donald Trump Mike is Bloomberg. to – Hello. Yeah, yes. Spend your money to bail the post office out. Right, it, it's it's right. it's sofa change to you guys and make it a loan make it a forgivable private loan if you have to but get these people out of the goddamn way or we're screwed all right do you want to talk about QAnon or do you want to talk about david brooks well QAnon is short which is okay the, the <laughs> idea that there's a QAnon candidate who um won won a primary won a primary um not and this is one step up from our Illinois Nazis. Really, they're they're trying right, to outdo right. us. Um, and that Donald Trump praised her, and um, Kevin McCarthy praised her, and she'll be welcomed into the Republican fold. Um, and this she's sort of, a nine eleven truther, also. By she's, the way, she's just she's the she's the total package, Blue Guy. She's the total package. <laughs> Kamala Harris, eat your heart out. We got yeah. the total package on the right too. And both she is, sides. yeah, and she is a typical Republican voter. She is the manifestation of the Republican Party in the flesh. And there's this sort of generalized shudder that, well, surely, surely we're not going to go this far down. Well, why wouldn't they? When when was the last time the Republican Party was taken out into behind the woodshed and just shellacked for being a bunch of fucking traitors and lunatics and conspiracy mongers? The answer is yeah, 64. The answer is never and not in my adult lifetime has this ever happened. Right. The, you know, the, the people who swore that that Vince Foster was murdered by Hillary Clinton um, all got positions in the next administration. The they people sure who, did. The they people sure who, did. People who yeah. backed the Iraq war and called liberals traitors all work at, at national newspapers now. There's no fucking downside so until this is, this, is a, this is a problem of markets until mm -hmm. there is a financial, professional and personal price to be paid for being a Republican of any kind in this country, this is going to go right on happening. And Chuck Todd will sit there and wince and blink and, and stutter and have the, you know, the, the, the mortal remains of George Wallace reanimated in zombie form and ask him, so what do you think of the election? I hate black people. Oh, well, that's all the time we have. That's, mm -hmm. that's your future. It doesn't matter what sort of shiftless, mindless, meatheads republicans shovel to the front of the line the press is going to treat them as one half of our glorious political democracy and until they are the, until the media is punished for doing this they're going to keep doing it like any other bad habit until the hangover and the throwing up is so bad that you can't function anymore you're not going to stop indulging yourself in a behavior that in this case pays very well and there's no reason to stop. And and my example of that today in, in a mild sort of toned down whispery version is David Brooks. Because today David Brooks forgot the, the Civil War happened again. <laughs> he does this a lot. And a you lot. think an editor, any editor, any minimally qualified editor would tap him on the shoulder and say, you know, Mr. Brooks, the Civil War actually happened. The people actually died. But he really does sum up all of the bad things that the Republican Party does to get itself off the hook for the last series of bad things they did. He did, he indulged, as I wrote today on my blog, his three favorite fetishes in the New York Times. Um, now, fetish number one, 
imagining uh, an imaginary third way between the extremes on both sides. Quoting Mr. Brooks, mostly I find myself supporting the conservative radicals, leaders who are confident that we can push for big change while defeating the illiberalism of radicals on the left and the right, blue gal, the left and the right. Didn't he write the same column in 2008? He's written the same column every three weeks for the last 17 years. Uh And he's never been right. Number Uh two, David Brooks forgets the Civil War ever happened. In the middle of the 19th century, radicals like John Brown and purists like Horace Greeley gave way to the incrementalism of Abraham Lincoln. Oh, Lord. Uh, Antietam is an incrementalist thing. Yeah. Gettysburg is incrementalism. And I've looked and he's done this over and over again. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lincoln had to slowly build the whole nation around to the uh, uh, the whole nation around the abolition of slavery. He had to compromise and gather a broad coalition to pass the 13th Amendment. That is true. To Mm -hmm. get to a place where he could make those compromises and get a consensus in the Congress, he had to kill hundreds of thousands of Confederate traitors, burn their cities to the ground, smash their their navy, destroy their crops, find a general who would kill them and destroy them and raise their cities until they said, we can't fight anymore. We're destroyed. He had to beat them into the ground. And it is fucking creepy that Republican after Republican, this is something that Michael Gerson has done. This is something that Joe Scarborough has done. This is something David Brooks has done like three or four times. They remember Lincoln as this sort of compromising centrist yeah. uniter. Like you really, really believe that? I mean, David Brooks doesn't have a degree in journalism. He has a degree in history. <laughs> and the fact that he doesn't want to acknowledge the civil war happened, Abraham Lincoln prosecuted a gigantic war on this continent against traitors in the South, killed lots of them until they stopped fighting and then got his way and then was assassinated by one of them. That whole thing is like really antithetical to David Brooks's masturbatory fantasy of what compromise is like. So he just pretends it never happened. And the last is, of course, what happens if Trump is defeated? Mm -hmm. Uh, Revolutionary Mm -hmm. zealotry will fade as debates over practical change and legislation dominate. No, it won't. Apparently, again, David Brooks slept through the entire W administration. (laughs) It slept through the entire Obama administration. Republicans got the shit kicked out of him in 2006 and 2008, enough where any healthy party would have awakened to the fact that they are going down the wrong road in history and straightened out. They didn't. They all slunk away as David Brooks was watching, called themselves Tea Partiers, regrouped and came back, obstructed everything there was there was their revolutionary zealotry went thermonuclear david it didn't Mm -hmm. go away because the scary black man was the president who was going to come take their guns away and they regrouped and in eight years they elected donald trump so no the republican party has to be destroyed down to the the king of the birthers birthers. and so david brooks is wrong on every single count and by the way uh, something you should know Over the past 20 years, pretty much every Republican catastrophe and every Republican, every time the right has sort of lurched even further into crazy town, that has been preceded by David Brooks predicting that a glorious conservative renaissance is just around the corner. Right. And why uh, why Dean Baquette keeps this guy on staff, I have no idea. But one day, I'm going to find Dean Baquette in a a bar or an alley. I'm going (laughs) to buy him many drinks, and he's going to say, here's the thing, man. (laughs) Brooks knows shit about a lot of people that would embarrass mm-hmm. me or whatever it is. But there is some other reason other than because I've never seen anyone this fucking inept at their job kept in a peak position in public for this long. But this is how Republicans operate. They just lie. This is the, the good Republicans. These are the nice ones. These are our allies. These are the never Trumpers who will still just fucking lie to your face about what happened, how it happened, what the future is going to look like and who's to blame. Every fucking time because they can't help themselves because the alternative for David Brooks is exactly the same as an alternative for the average Republican voter. You'd have to admit you've been wrong about everything your whole life, that you're a fuck up and you've done a lot of damage and you don't want to take any responsibility for it. And that his 401k will not tolerate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Right. Right. Onward. Uh, We're going to just spend a minute, folks, on Chuck Todd, because Chuck Todd is having a really hard week. Leave Chuck Todd alone, man. Leave (laughs) Chuck Todd alone. 
wrap yourself in a blanket and start crying. <laughs> you, don't you don't deserve to die. You don't deserve it. He's such a good man. No, he's not. No, he's really not. Yeah, this was another week when yet another Republican thug, this time Peter Navarro, used him as a tackling dummy. Um, it was on the Sunday. It was on Meet the Press, the sort of premier number one America political blah, 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 which has just been trash for years, but they still call it that. Um, and there was a joke going around that Chuck Todd had no idea why he was demoted because after NBC executives said they were kicking him to the curb, he never bothered to ask any follow-up questions. <laughs> I think it was TV's Frank who asked yeah. that on Twitter. TV's yes. Frank is awesome, by the way. Yep. Yes. Um, and you want to talk about modern martyrs. I do want to talk about modern martyrs for a minute uh, because today is a day when the Episcopal Church and – uh, the Catholic Church and the Anglican Church remember uh, two modern martyrs mm -hmm. in their remembrances for morning prayer. Um, and it really moved me to hear about these folks this morning. Uh, and it also is a lesson for all of us that, uh, you know, we're not all called upon to die for the cause, literally die for the cause, but we are called upon to be brave. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of courage is going to be required of all of us for the next rest of our life <laughs> yeah, let's say the next rest of our life yeah rest exactly life. right because this is this this battle is long mm -hmm. and uh black lives matter is a lifetime commitment mm -hmm. um they're they're remembering today two modern martyrs and i hadn't thought about them this way but indeed they are maximilian colby was a polish priest who was arrested February 1941 by the German Gestapo. He was transferred to Auschwitz in May of 41. And in July of 41, there was a prisoner escape at the camp. And the Gestapo decided to select 10 men at random to put them in a sealed bunker and starve them to death as a way of preventing further escapes. One man that was selected uh, cried out that he had a wife and a family and, you know, could he please not be selected? And Sebastian Colby really came Colby. forward as a priest and said, take me instead. Uh, Maximilian Colby. Yeah. Maximilian Colby came forward and said, father Colby came forward and said, take me instead. Mm -hmm. And Colby died at the hands of, of the Germans on this day. Um, Mm -hmm. on on this in uh in july of 41 he is remembered on this day mm -hmm. it's it's a church thing um and that man and his wife and his children the man that he saved uh attended his uh martyrdom uh ceremony that uh, pope john paul ii had of course pope john paul ii did elevate many polish priests and <laughs> during his time, of course. He was canonized, uh, right? Yeah. He was can canonized, exactly. So, mm -hmm. uh, and and there was this man and his wife and children from the camp uh, were, were there uh, to celebrate Maximilian Kolbe's uh, courage and sacrifice. And then uh, closer to home and closer to our own time, uh, Jonathan Daniels, an Episcopal seminarian, uh, in 1965, was with a group of civil rights workers who were arrested in Fort Deposit, Alabama, and released several days later on August 20th. He was murdered by Tom Coleman. Uh, one one record said uh, that this person was a sheriff's deputy, but that doesn't go far enough. He was a construction worker who was given a gun by the white sheriff mm -hmm. to keep black people down. And uh, that that rings true today when you think about what's happening in Portland mm -hmm. and other parts of the country where Donald Trump's thugs are uh, threatening average people who are simply protesting injustice. Uh, this deputized construction worker, um, some members of the group uh, of civil rights workers who had just been released from jail attempted to enter a store to buy sodas. They were a mixed race group. Jonathan saw that Coleman had leveled his gun at a 17-year-old African-American girl, and he pushed her out of the way and caught the full blast of the shotgun and died. He was 26 years old. 
Tom Coleman, the deputy, was acquitted by an all-white jury and died in 1997 at the age of 86. Uh, we have more work to do, folks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can honor and remember those who gave their lives. Uh, Martin Luther King mentioned Jonathan Daniels uh, as being one of the bravest people in the movement. And uh, yeah, we remember him mm -hmm. and and his sacrifice. And I just, I wanted to share that with all of you because I consider everybody who's listening to my voice right now family. Mm -hmm. And if you were sitting around the dinner table with me, we'd be talking about Jonathan Daniels and Maximilian Colby tonight. Uh, and, and, that's, then, and then we'd have pie. <clears throat> and then we'd have vegan sweet potato pie. Yeah. Which middle child made yesterday. Middle child made, right. And, and gave you a spoonful and said, this is for work. You can't have any. <laughs> you can't have it. I'm taking this to the grocery store where I work. Right. Um, all right. Uh, let's do a news roundup. All right. Uh, on Tuesday, Marion County Sheriff Billy Woods ordered that his deputies will be banned from wearing masks at work in most circumstances. The order extends to visitors to the sheriff's office. This, come as, this comes as Marion County records a record number of COVID deaths daily. Meanwhile, in Arizona, the GOP sheriff who vowed not to enforce Arizona's coronavirus restrictions has tested positive. The numbers don't justify the actions anymore, the defiant Republican sheriff told the Arizona Republic at the time, vowing not to arrest people or shut down businesses that violated the order. 300 deaths is not a significant enough number to continue to ruin the economy. Mm -hmm. On Wednesday, less than two months after publicly challenging the state's efforts to slow the spread of a virus that has now spiked in Arizona, Lamb announced he had tested positive for the coronavirus before a scheduled meeting with President Trump. Uh, if your law, local law enforcement officers are announced publicly they have no intention of enforcing the law, then they're no longer law enforcement officers. They're just thugs with guns and should be treated that way. Uh, the United States reported nearly 1,500 deaths from the coronavirus in a single day on Wednesday. This is the highest day since midway, mid-May, even as Donald Trump urged Americans to, quote, open up our schools and open up our businesses. Do you want to uh, mention the local angle on that story? Oh, sure. I, I have it down in the local news, but I'd be delighted yeah, sure. to. Just mention uh, it now since it's on topic. The local PetSmart employee. Uh, who was fired for wearing a Black Lives Matter mask, uh, is has gotten black, uh, has gotten PetSmart into a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, yes, they have. They, they, <laughs> apparently, the policy wasn't clear, so management said, sure, you can, and then said, oh, wait a minute, no, you can't, and then, wait a minute, we're going to suspend you, and then, oh, we're going to fire you, and now they're in a heap of trouble, as well they mm -hmm. should be. Um, you know, unless you're providing dress code uh, approved, wear apparel for everyone on your staff if right. you're if you're requiring someone to wear a mask which i think they should i can wear whatever the fuck it was not, there's no swear words on it there's no cursing right um there's no harm well, and at all. both of our our teenage girls work in various restaurant like i said grocery store facilities and they are provided with very plain masks with nothing on them yes for and, work and, and so, that's what they're required to wear but their employer provides that and so Instead of wearing a mask, middle child wears jeans that say "Eat the rich" stencil that I embroidered that for you, her. You embroidered, for her day. yeah. So you know, you find a way. Mm -hmm. um, it's very subtle. It's on the back pocket. It just says "Eat the rich" in little mm -hmm. pink embroidery. It's mm -hmm. not. Uh, it's not on her face, right? <laughs> uh, the the local angle I wanted to to discuss as oh. well is that our school board oh, yes, has yes, yes. reversed themselves. Yes. And uh, we are not going to have uh, hybrid schooling starting no, August no, no. 31st. We're no. going to have online only schooling going till at least late October. Yeah, there was an emergency meeting um, in which uh, on Zoom, on Zoom, in which uh, a couple of school board members reversed themselves because they took a lot of incoming fire from a lot of people who don't want to sacrifice their children to the uh, gods of Republican. You got to open everything up now. And weren't going to do it. And a whole bunch of health experts who said, this is insane. And the practical effect, and this is on local radio, this was, you know, very big deal here because it was, look, you know, someone's going to get it. 
you know, right. and you, you know, have- the first week someone's going to test positive and you're going to have to shut all this shut. down. And so why don't you just sort of bite the bullet and acknowledge that this is going to be um, shut down until it's either, either New Zealand level, you know, le- uh, down to nothing or there's a vaccine. There's just, right. you can't, you can't quit pretending that maybe somehow it will work itself out because that's not how things work. So, and the school board reluctantly uh, voted and reversed itself. So now we have, you know, kids are going to be home for another couple of months. Right. Uh, the number of U.S. residents who have died since March is now more than 200,000 higher than it would be in a normal year. This suggests that the official death counts may be substantially underestimating the overall effects of the coronavirus, yeah. particularly those among seniors who are dying alone in their homes. Yeah. And the fact that the CDC is no longer tracking numbers. Um, yeah. The, 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 I mean, this it goes hand in glove with the federal government. The Trump administration is doing everything it can do to lie to you about the threat that's right in your own backyard because they don't care if you die. They, they want to be reelected and they want their tax cuts. And they don't give a shit about anything beyond that. Uh, and and they're that, judges. That, don't forget they're judges. Oh, they're ju- Got to have those 12-year-old judges who are going to be judges for the next you know 70 years. Um, and what happens is you actually have people inside the administration who know what they're talking about, talking at cross purposes to the people at the podium who are telling you something exact opposite. So the director of the CDC warned that the United States could have the worst fall from a public health perspective we've ever had. If Americans don't follow CDC coronavirus guidelines, Dr. Robert Redfield urged Americans to do four simple things to avoid exacerbating the crisis. Wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands, and be smart about crowds. He added, I'm not asking some Americans to do it. We all got to do it. Trump will deliver his Republican National Convention speech from the White House lawn. I guess he decided that Gettysburg wasn't a good place. Yeah. Uh, We have heard better suggestions from our listeners. Appomattox Courthouse, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, barricades on both sides and flanked by police dogs, blocking the doorway to the admissions office of the University of Alabama. So many good alternatives. Yeah. And this week we saw the rebirth of birtherism. Rebirth of a nation. Uh, This week, Trump perpetuated a racist and patently false conspiracy that Kamala Harris is somehow not eligible for the vice presidency or the presidency because her parents were immigrants. And let's not forget that that was also perpetuated by Newsweek Newsweek. magazine. Newsweek. Fucking Newsweek. I'm canceling my subscription, Blue Gal. I'm canceling my subscription. You don't have a subscription. No, I don't have a subscription. Yelling the quiet part at the top of your lungs, Trump vowed to block funding for the U.S. Postal Service so Democrats can't have universal mail-in voting during the coronavirus pandemic. He didn't need to worry, though, because the U.S. Senate, led by Mitch McConnell, has gone home until September 9th. They're not going to do a fucking thing. Um, People who did stick around to do their job, Nancy Pelosi and House Democrats, uh, 174 House Democrats and Speaker Pelosi demanded that the U.S. Postal Service reverse operational changes made by Postmaster General Louis DeJoy. DeJoy, a major Trump campaign contributor, has ordered the post office no longer treat all elections as election mail as first class. He has eliminated overtime pay for hundreds of thousands of postal workers and required that mail is kept until the next day if distribution centers are running late. He has removed or reassigned nearly two dozen postal leaders. He's implemented a hiring freeze and requested, quote, early retirement authority for non-union employees. In some locations, mail sorting machines, I believe, Uh, Over 600 of them are being taken apart and moved. In other locations, those public blue mailboxes you see everywhere are being trucked off, removed and trucked off to God knows where. They're doing it. They're destroying the post office to win an election. And I can't think of anything more nakedly traitorous than that. DeJoy holds a multi-million dollar stake in his former company, XPO Logistics, a United States Postal Service contractor, which makes his appointment a huge conflict of interest. The man belongs in jail for interfering with the mail. A federal judge in Pennsylvania ordered the Trump campaign and the GOP to produce evidence, evidence, facts, you know, that vote by mail fraud in the state exists by Friday. And he's a Trump appointee, by the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. The Trump administration proposed changing the definition of American-made showerheads to allow more water flow following complaints from Trump about his hair routine and the need to keep his hair perfect. 
Yeah. Let's that, talk about his looks and weight and makeup for the yeah. next 80 days. Let's do that. Each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is a goose. Uh, our listener Doug sent in Otto. Otto isn't a pet, of course. But Otto and his wife spent last winter at our listener Doug's Old Mill Pond. Aww. And Doug it hopes that Otto and Mrs. Otto will return this winter. Apparently, they are recognizable. Uh, GeeseRelief.com, which is a real website, reports that geese eat roots, shoots, stems, seeds, leaves of grass and grain, bulbs, berries, and insects. And, of course, Otto eats freshly poured goose food, our <laughs> fake sponsor. I didn't see because that coming. <laughs> because whether Mother Nature serves gourmet perfection or last winter's dreck, the goose in your pond will always consider it freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Otto, who is eating in this picture, of course, mm -hmm. at our Facebook page or website. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet or wild animal to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write to us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go Postal unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise hashtag save the post office don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline if you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself buy one for us this is not charity this is our job and the labor of love and we love you everybody if you're listening to us we love you very much except for that one guy well, that the the person that you call that son of a bitch. Yeah, we love we love him a lot. He's he's a he's a good guy. We're we're he's a he's a good guy. We're There's brothers a guy who by us. we're brothers by widely disparate mothers. You, That's it, all I can yeah, say. and you both have you both have a wife that you don't deserve. Oh yeah, no, married well above our station, well above our station. Yeah. Oh. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can, too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. We do love hearing from you on Twitter and Facebook as well. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, look, the Internet Kitties want to repeat what you've heard for years on this podcast. Go postal unions and vote like your country depends on it, because it does. Your cats are counting on you. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.